Okay, so it's really important for us to understand harvest time. So go ahead and put up my sermon here real quick. I am going to go through a couple of passages, but we want to understand that when it's time to harvest, God knows exactly when that person needs to be plucked. And he's going to use you to do that. And if you're willing for God to use that portion of your life, whatever it is, Rabbi, you don't understand, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not an evangelist. Can you pray for people? Can you talk with people and just ask them how they're doing? And if they share and they open up to you, can you say, you know what? I don't have the answers for all of this, but let me pray for you because God does. Now, it's no shock that we did. Now, I'm going to bring up the first passage here. Then he said to his disciples, this is Yeshua saying to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest, the Lord of the harvest, that he may send out workers into what? His harvest field. You see, he's orchestrated this, and he's orchestrated opportunities for you and I to share our faith with, believe, with unbelievers and the people around us, believe it or not. And it doesn't matter what field or background you have, he's given you particular gifts to help bring reconciliation to the world. And so you don't have to be a great orator or a great speaker or a loud speaker and stand on the street corner with a bullhorn. Matter, matter of fact, people don't listen to you anymore if you do that. You get on soapboxes today, they just keep walking by. They've, you've been tuned out. As soon as you start yelling at somebody or telling them that they need to repent and do that, most of the time these people, they, they, they block you out. Now that strategy worked at one time. It doesn't work today. You may get a few people, but mostly it's going to come when you're sitting down with somebody and you're just having a cup of coffee and you're sharing with them. Do you guys see what I'm saying? It's going to be in that kind of form. Now watch the next verse here. It says this. It says, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and whoever wins souls is wise. Now it was important for me to, to talk about the, the rejoicing in the fruit of the Spirit like I talked about last week. Uh, it's important for us to understand because the fruit of the Spirit in our lives is the very character and presence of God in you. Because it's the presence of the Holy Spirit coming out and bringing it out. And it's interesting that someone who wins souls as wise is connected to the fruit in your life. See, it's one thing to get baptized in the Holy Spirit and to receive the power from on high and to speak in tongues and have the interpretation in tongues. It's another thing to lay hands on the sick and see them recover and do all that because God will do those things. Those are his promises. But he's designed you and I to bear fruit. And when we bear fruit and the people around us are hungry and they're looking for that fruit, if it's not there, you're not going to have an opportunity to witness to that person and bring that person to the Lord. It's truly connected to the fruit in your life. Believe it, way more than you think so. I've, I'm not boasting when I say this, guys, and I'm not trying to brag when I say this, but I have led hundreds of people to the Lord, if not thousands. Seriously, I've been in ministry for 30 years. But me personally, going out and just talking with people and doing stuff, I've led hundreds, and I'm sure many of you have done the same. And sometimes we don't realize the things that we do have an impact on people years later. My wife got to meet a very dear friend of mine, Zane, um, and uh, his wife at the time, years ago, years ago, I hadn't met her, um, and they had left Alaska, and I was pastoring in Alaska, and I had gone to Hawaii, and then I moved to Oregon, and then as we were going through, I mean, uh, to Idaho, and then when we were going from Idaho back to Oregon to visit my family, We'd stop in Boise, Idaho, where they lived, and I got to meet his wife. And they were talking to me, and she had some questions for me. It's like, hey, do you remember when you said such and such, such and such? What did you mean by that? And I go, how did you know I said that? She goes, and then Zane said she got saved listening to your sermon tapes. And like 10 years later, he was still had my sermon tapes, and he would play my sermon tapes, and his wife got saved listening to my sermons that I did for 10 years previous to that time. And I was blown out of the water. I was blown out of the water. 
When I was in Hawaii, I had, a, I had some people that would come, and this one lady was so faithful to come every week. And when she didn't come every week, she would, she would still want to get the... Uh, I used to do sermon uh, notes where you put in the bulletin, and you could write out the sermon notes and stuff like that. And she had us over for dinner one time. And she's sitting there, and she goes, Rabbi, or she said pastor at this, because I was pastoring a church at that time. She goes, Pastor, when you said such and such and such and such, uh, can you explain that a little bit? And I go, when did I say that? And she walked over to her bookshelf, and she pulls out a uh, binder that she had taken those notes and three, you know, put uh, holes in them and put them in these binders. And she had like two or three binders. She had every one of my sermons in there. And she would take my sermons after I preached every, sh- every Sunday. And then she'd go throughout the week and study it and go back and read the scriptures and go through it and write down questions and stuff like that. And she came back and she did that. And I was blown out of the water. It's like, wow, seriously, you actually do that with my sermons? She goes, don't you? I said, no, I throw them away. <laughs> I said, most people probably just throw them away. They probably put them in their Bible and they see it a week later and they like toss it out or do something. I, I was blown out of the water. We don't realize that sometimes the giftings that God has given us are making an impact around people or people around us. We don't realize it. The simplest things, the kindest gen, uh, uh, genders or uh, the kindest gestures that you give to people is absolutely amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And when we speak these things and we do these things and we, and we share the fruit of the Spirit of God in our lives, that's when people get hungry and they're looking for it. And when they walk up to you and they're, they're hungry and they grab a plastic fruit, it doesn't really say much about God in your life. But they reach out and it's the right fruit that they need. And you're able to minister to that person. There's nothing like it. There's really nothing like it. When you see somebody get saved, I mean, guys, I've seen, I've seen people in downtown Dallas when I was ministering to the gay and prostitute area of downtown Dallas and preaching down there. I've seen people fall on their knees, fall on their knees and start crying out to God simply by just talking to them about Yeshua. And they're getting spit on and kicked and called traitors and betrayal, betrayers and stuff and doing stuff. And I saw some heavy-duty stuff. I've seen some amazing amazing things just simply by saying, can I talk to you about Yeshua? Simple. Can I pray for you? It's really, it's really not that hard, but it's connected to the fruit. So it says here, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. People are hungry. They need that life in them. There's people that are dying every day without that. So the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and whoever wins souls is wise. So it's important for us to understand how to minister to the lost. We don't just machine gun them. You know what I mean by that? <laughs> what, what's the old day? What, what did they call them in the 20s, in the 30s, in the 40s? Bible thumpers, right? <laughs> Bible thumpers. We don't need Bible thumpers because most of the time that hurts and nobody wants to hear about it anyhow. We need, and we don't want to machine gun them with everything. You're like, get saved. You gotta do this. You gotta. No, you don't want to do that either. You got to learn how to speak to the people that God brings you in the ways that God has gifted you to do so. That's how you win souls. Truly, seriously, I've seen it over and over and over again. So let me read another passage to you guys. Another one here is, go to the ant, you slacker. I love this passage, by the way. Go to the, go to the ant, you slacker. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander. No overseer or ruler, yet it prepares its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. God has given us work to do. He's given us a job to do. And he wants us to gather in the summer so that we can celebrate in the end gathering of when all of us are called up before the Lord and we get to celebrate that Sukkot, that, that huge Sukkot service with God. Isn't that an amazing thing? So we have a job. We have a job. Okay, and so those three passages is what I want to share, and we will continue this on. We're going to go into Matthew chapter 13. We're going to spend some time there because there's several parables in Matthew 13 that give us insights and wisdom on how to minister to the lost. So it's going to be very important that you come for the next few weeks to really listen. To, well, as long as I'm speaking, I can't remember who's speaking next, but I think I'm speaking the next couple of weeks anyhow. But but the thing is, is that we want to understand how to minister to the lost because every one of us in here was ministered to us and all of us were lost and we're now found. So it's important for us to continue to minister to the lost so they can be found as well. 
God partners with us, and he partners with you more than you think. And he's got more for you to do than you realize. And today, we started a fresh journey. I don't know if you guys know this, but we started a fresh journey this morning. In praise and worship, it didn't matter how you were when you walked through those doors. It didn't matter what sin you were carrying in when you carried through the doors, what struggles you were carrying in when you came through those doors, what issues you had when you came through those doors. If you responded to God during our worship time like and the words that were given to us and you responded to that, you have a new beginning here with the Lord. And it's important for you to do that and stop beating yourself up about I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, I, you know, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't do this. I like, you know, I did a sermon one time called Stop It. <laughs> you know, people are like, oh, da, 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 stop it. <laughs> yeah, but you don't stop it. We need to stop finding excuses and start walking forward in the grace that God has given us to minister to the people around us. And every single one of us, so right now, if you're taking notes or you're taking mental notes or you're writing something down or everybody get out your phone right now, okay? Write down three names of people that you can think of that come right to your heart. Three names that you know that need the Lord and that you've been wanting to share with them. Just write those names down right now. Okay, we're going to close after we do this. And I'm going to ask you guys a very, and you can put their first name, you can put their initials, whatever reminds you of those three people. Okay, you guys good? Everybody got it? Three names that you've recorded? Now let me ask you a question. Where are those people? Are they here? No, they're out there. So they're not within the, the walls here. They're outside the walls. And so what we need to do is go beyond this Shabbat service. And as we go out beyond this Shabbat service is we recognize that those three people that you wrote down are people who need to hear about Yeshua in one way or another. Okay? And you know that those people are desiring the Lord in many, many ways because you know it. You can just see it. You can tell. Well, I want to encourage you to pray to the Lord of the harvest because it's his field and ask him for wisdom on how you can approach those three people. And kids, this is for you as well. This isn't for an adult. This is for every single one of us. If you are in the Lord and you have friends around you that don't know Yeshua, I guarantee that God has equipped you to be able to speak to those children or your friends. Okay? So remember, look at those three people throughout the week. Ask the Lord for wisdom. And walk in the fruit of the Spirit so that way God can use you. The, right, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And it's connected to evangelism. <laughs> That's beautiful. You know, I used to mess around with my kids. This is my last story and I'm done. I used to mess around with my kids all the time and uh, make them laugh all the time. But I grab them by the collar like this and I bring them forward. And I, my eyes will go like this and I look around and go, look at me in the eye. Look at me in the eye, kid. And they're, they're like trying to look at me in the eye. Look at me in the eye, kid. You know, and they couldn't see me in the eye. You know, they're like, Dad, I'm trying, I'm trying. But your eyes keep moving all over. I go, look at me in the eye. <laughs> and just play with them. When you walk up to people and you're just like, you need Jesus, you need Jesus, you need Yeshua, and stuff like that, they can't quite see what's going on, can they? But when you walk up to them and you love on them and you start sharing your faith with them and you start telling them how much Yeshua loves them and you pray for them. Now, granted, there are times where you have to cast out the demons. Granted, there are times where you have to be tough with somebody. There are times when you have to lay down the law. But let the Lord lead you. Let the Lord lead you and find freedom in doing that. But for the most part, ask God for wisdom on how to speak to people, and he will reveal to you how to do it. Amen? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you so much for your word. Thank you, Lord, for the encouragement that we have to share your word and to share your, your love and your compassion in our lives, Lord. We're thankful for the ministry that you're doing in our lives, Lord, for those who responded to you and for those who are crying out to you lord thank you so much for answering their prayers for those who need healing lord i pray for complete healing in their lives you would do a mighty work lord hallelujah we trust in you we exalt you we 
We thank you for everything that you do. And we give you glory and praise in Yeshua's name. Amen. Of the rain.